Okay, so how is everyone today? Good? <laughs> you can see by the attendance that there's no homework due today. <laughs> so, uh, it came to my attention and to my surprise that there was no homework due today. Apparently I forgot to post it. So, all right, my mistake. Uh, but I will post them and they'll be due next week. So, okay. Uh, very good. I'm sorry for those of you who had a panic that you couldn't find it. Please accept my apologies. Okay, so any questions before we begin? Okay, last time we were talking about natural domain and intervals and union and intersection and we're still talking about all that. So let's do one more of these. Uh, so, please find <coughs> the natural domain of the square root of 2x minus 6 and then divide this by x minus 10. I want you to give your answer uh, as a plot uh, and in interval notation. Okay. So before we do it, in a sense, what could what could go wrong here when we're trying to do this? Okay, so let me, let me phrase it differently. Would you please remind me, to, in plain language, what natural domain is? The numbers that... Solve the expression when you plug in x. Right, so it's, it's the set of x's that you could plug in, in principle. So for example, uh, would it be legitimate for us to plug in 100? Yes. Yeah, because 2 times 100, that'd be 200, minus 6, that's 194, square root of that. Yeah, that's fine. And then 100 minus 10, that's 90. Can you divide by 90? Yeah. Okay. So, so what could go wrong with this particular expression? 10. 10. 10 is an issue because you can't divide by 0. Okay, besides 10, what else could go wrong? A negative in the square root. A negative in the square root. <coughs> that could also be a problem. So, for example, concerning the square root, you could plug in, say, uh, you could plug in 5. 2 times 5 is 10, minus 6 is 4, square root of that's 2, no problems. Could you plug in, uh, could you plug in, 2. No. 2 times 2 is 4, minus 6 is negative 2, squared to negative 2, no go. So does everyone see that there's, there's two kinds of restrictions at play? There's the restrictions corresponding to the requirement for a non-negative argument for an even radical, and also we need to avoid divisions by 0. So where the numerator is concerned, numerator, We're going to consider them separately, numerator and denominator. What is the algebraic requirement for the numerator? Okay, I do agree that x has to be bigger than 3, but I want you to tell me how is it that you arrived at that conclusion. Well, because if you do 2 times 2, it's 4, so you can have 0. Okay? 0 is fine for square roots. But I need a... I need a algebraic recipe for coming to this to coming for coming to that conclusion that we can write down and the grader can look at and say yes yes student understands so what must we do well in the end it's this thing right the generic name for the thing being put into the other thing <laughs> is argument so the argument to the radical. 
what must be the case is the argument to the radical, which is 2x minus 6, must be non-negative, which is to say greater or equal to 0. And so the recipe for getting full credit for this part of the exercise is solving that inequality. So how do we solve this inequality? Add 6 on both sides. Add 6. So that we have 2x greater or equal to 6. Now what? Divide by 2. And so, as she said correctly, we need x to be greater or equal to 3. So 3 would be fine. 3.1 would be fine. 3.1 million would be fine. 2.9 is not fine. Okay? Any question about the numerator? <coughs> the denominator is simpler is just anything but 10. And so what we need, we need, we need this condition to be true and this condition to be true. Okay. So as a plot, the way to address finding out when both conditions are true and the way to plot it and to explain it to the greater is to say, okay, well here's the first condition that must be true. X greater or equal to 3. And as a plot, as a plot, x greater or equal to 3 looks like this. It's, we start at 3 here. And 3 is legitimate, and so is everything to the right of 3. So that's what x greater or equal to 3 looks like <coughs> as a plot. How about x not 10? How does x not 10 appear? 10 is open. And what else? Right. So, so 10 is not fine, but everything to the right of 10 is fine, and everything to the left of 10 is fine. So the first condition looks like that. The second condition looks like that. So in order to be able to evaluate the expression, in order to be able to evaluate that one, we need both these conditions to be true, which means we need a red point and a green point. So the red, the red is a set of numbers. The green is a set of numbers. And I'm fishing for you to tell me an I word. Starts with I. Intersection, right? Intersection. We need red points and green points. So if we're way back here at uh, negative 39, uh, we have a green point. We've got a green point back here. But at negative 39, could we evaluate the expression? No, because we need a red point and a green point. So we start moving to the right, so do, 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 do. you observe the first place where we have both red and green, that is to say where both the numerator and the denominator are defined, is at 3. That's the first place it occurs. And then we continue having a red and green point, so do, 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 do. And then we briefly, just at 10, don't have the green point, so that's not included. And then from that point on, we have red and green points. So the answer to the question as a plot is this. 3, including 3, and then all the way to 10, but we don't get 10. And then everything to the right. So that's the answer to the question <clears throat> as a plot. Is there any question about why that's the answer? So. So now can someone say it back to me, but in reverse? So I did intersection. Why did I need to do intersection? Right, because I need both of those things to be true. 
I need both of them to be true. Okay. Then as an interval. Do we need to show all that work? Yes. So, um, you know, <laughs> the state of Texas kind of holds the position that being able to precisely say these kinds of things is useful. <laughs> Apparently without regard to what your profession is, your eventual profession will be. <laughs> so, if you don't like it, then talk to your legislator. <laughs> okay. School board, really. Uh, so, now how do we write this as a an interval notation. How does the answer get written? Okay. Bracket on three to ten, parentheses at ten, okay. Union, then what? To infinity. Okay. Now, I have a question. There is a fraction of students, so, so this is the answer. That's the answer. But there is a fraction of students who will, at this point, be confused and even possibly a little insistent that no, the answer should be this. This is not the answer. Why is this not the answer? If 10 had brackets, I'm because you're already saying it's not included with the parentheses. It, this, this is most definitely not the answer. Right. Yes. Under any circumstance, even with even if I did put brackets on the 10, it would not be the answer. Shouldn't be an intersection. Okay. So let's think about what this means. Remember, intersection logically means and. And. So let's consider for a moment. In 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 the United States and let's say the, con the contiguous United States. Um, everybody is in at most one state. So let, let's pretend that you can't stand with one foot on the one and the one foot in the other. You know, there's a place in the United States where there's four states that come together and you can kind of lay on it and <laughs> be in four different states at the same time. Anyway, so let's, let's assume that there's none of that. Okay, none of that. So everybody is either in Texas or Oklahoma, and that, that's all the states, right? No, there's, there's more than that. But So everybody's in one state. So would you please tell me about all of the people who are, who are in Texas and in California? What about that set of people? Yeah, that set's empty. It's a perfectly well-defined set, but it just doesn't contain anything. So now, now considering this, let's consider the points that are in that and in that, that are in both. So here, this piece right here corresponds to 3 to, three to 10, and this piece corresponds to the other one. So what points are in both? None. So this set right here, this set is empty. So what this means, what this means, this means or. This means you are in that piece or you're in that piece. Which is to say, we could say something like this, that the set of all people in the United States are either in Texas or New York or Florida blah, 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 with or in between all of them, not and, right? Nobody's, nobody is in Texas and Florida, no living person, right? <laughs> Texas and Florida and all the rest of them. Okay, good. So any question about this, uh, about what we've said here? Another matter I want to bring up is that on Monday, I think, when we were talking about intervals and unions and intersection the first time, we did an exercise where I said, here's an interval, here's another interval, let's compute their union, and then you simplified it into a single interval that no longer had union in it, right? We did an exercise like that. 
So now my question to you is, is here's an interval, and there's an interval, and there's a union, unioning them together. Is it possible to express this set as a single set without a union? Is it possible to do that? Why or why not? You cannot. It's not possible. It's not possible. And the reason why it's not possible is because recall the definition of contiguity. Not continuity, but contiguity. An interval is a contiguous set of the reals, subset of the reals. So contiguity means, means that you can, in that object, you can start at one point and select any other point and you can make it from the first point to the second point without leaving the set. So for example, <clears throat> here's the silver point because I'm holding a sil silver writing instrument on it and here's the, blue, the green point since I'm holding the green one. Okay. Do you observe that I can start at the green point and move to the silver one without picking up my pencil and without leaving the blue set? Okay. I can do the same thing with these two initial points. But I cannot do it if I put the silver point here and the green point there. I cannot trace from the green point to the <coughs> silver point without picking up my pencil and without leaving the set. Okay, so for that reason, the lack of contiguity, the lack of, the lack of connectedness, that's why you cannot express this without a union symbol. Okay, and it's also, you know, Physically, this is like, okay, if, if we selected a point in Dallas and we selected a point in, in Houston, then you could walk from, from that point to the other point, in principle anyway. It would be a long walk. But in principle, you could, without leaving the United States. But you could not walk from Dallas to Houston, or sorry, from Dallas to Honolulu, okay, without leaving the United States. It's not possible. But you want to know so you want to know something kind of interesting is that uh, co the con Texas actually is not cont contiguous, at least not by maybe one of the strictest definitions, because there's actually parts of Texas that are, that are now south of the Rio Grande, and there's parts of Mexico that are north of the Rio Grande. <laughs> border ships. Because the definition of the border is the is the location of the Rio Grande at the time of the treaty. <laughs> and it is, it's, it, you know, all rivers wiggle around in time. <laughs> so, at any rate, I, I, think, I think things like that are funny. Any question about this example? Okay. <clears throat> uh, lost track of what I was doing here. Ah, so now... Now I need to call out Mrs. Harris in seventh grade for lying to you slightly. Okay, so here comes another lie that we're going to have to reveal. So what happens when you take a, a math class, math classes over, over time, and probably any class, but math in, in particular is subject to this, is that your instructor tells you something that's almost true, but they're leaving out some technical detail that kind of overcomplicates it. Okay, so Miss Harris did that to you. Okay, and now we're going to say no, no longer will we overlook this detail. So, I want you to compare the following. Here's an expression, 3x multiplied by x plus 1, and then divide by x. And we're going to compare this to the expression 3 multiplied by x plus 1. So can someone spot how these two expressions are related to each other? <clears throat> mm -hmm. And notably, right, you've got an x in the numerator and an x in the denominator. And if you were to cancel them in this expression, then you'd have that expression, right? 
So this is what happens when you cancel the x's. You cancel the x's, that's what you get. This is now I'm going to raise a question. Are these expressions equivalent? And the answer is no, they are not. In Miss Harris's class, they were equivalent. <laughs> they were but they're not any, any longer for you. They're different. So now we need to quantify the, the manner in which they're different. So also, unrelated to math, but just courses in general, um, you know, there's something called Betteridge's Law of Headlines, which is every time you read something, a headline in, in the news, and if, if the headline is a yes or no question, then the answer is almost surely no. <laughs> Does this political event mean that, that this is the end of specific group Y? No, it doesn't. Is the Earth going to end in, in 2048? No, it's not. <laughs> the answer is no. Are these expressions equivalent? No, because why would I be asking this question? <laughs> right? Okay, so now we need to quantify how are they not the same. So how are they not the same? How are they not equivalent? Okay. I mean, I agree that this one has the x's and that one doesn't. But notice, for example, if you were to plug in 10, say. If you plug in 10, you get 3 times 10 times 11 divided by 10. So the 10 over 10 would cancel. You'd get 3 times 11, you'd get 33. And on this one, if you plugged in 10, you'd get 3 times 11, you'd get 33. You get 33 for that one, you get 33 for that one. Oh, the domains. There it is. That's the one. So what is it? The domain is different. The domain is different. Notice, notice that the natural domain of this, the natural domain of that expression is what? Not greater, greater than, than zero. Equal to zero. Yeah, it, well, it's not greater or equal to. It's anything except. Okay, yeah. Zero is zero is a thing that's not allowed. Oh, right, 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 yeah. Whereas this one, the one on the right, the natural domain of this one is what? is all x. So their natural domains are different, and therefore these expressions are not equivalent. So now I'm going to draw what the set of all numbers that aren't 0 looks like. So what does it look like? So it looks like this. That's what the natural domain of that expression looks like. What does the natural domain of that one look like? Just, line. Just a straight line. And so now I'm going to ask a different question, but it's really exactly the same. And I'm going to ask, are these two pictures the same picture? No, no right? They're not. They're not the same. So what I want you to observe and what the moral of the story here about this remark is, is that cancellation uh, can modify the domain.
cancellation can modify the domain. So now, think back. At, at this point, you've done a number of online homeworks and a number of written homeworks. And I'd like for you to recall that um, many of the exercises on those homeworks had the clause, assume all variables are positive. And it might have been slightly mysterious as to why why we keep saying that. Now I, now I claim that you should be able to tell me exactly why that was being said. Why? Because they would be equivalent if all the... Exactly. Because these two expressions are equivalent when you restrict to positive values. Which is the same thing as saying, here's two pictures. Are they the same picture? They're not. But now if I cut away all the parts that are not positive and ask again, are those two pictures the same picture? They are the same picture. That's the function of that, of that clause in all those exercises, assume the variables are positive. It's, it's skirting the issue of the modification of domain that can occur upon cancellation. So, this is a, what I'm doing here on this page is I'm foreshadowing what's going to happen okay, next week. Uh, and Friday, in fact, probably. Eh, Friday or next week. But for the rest of the day, we're going to we're going to ignore this issue. But rather than ignoring it implicitly, like you did in Miss Harris's class, we're going to ignore it explicitly with the explicit statement that we're going to ignore domain issues. Okay. Good. So, any question about this page? So the, the upshot is that as the semester progresses, you're still going to be doing cancellation. But instead of like being in your previous classes where you just sort of ignore them, you now have a bookkeeping task where you're going to have to say that, oh, that cancellation caused this modification in the domain. So you're going to have more bookkeeping. Okay. <clears throat> So, for example, <clears throat> I could say simplify, simplify by cancellation, and then here's the thing that we're saying explicitly, ignore domain issues. Okay, and what I want you to simplify is 2x squared plus x minus 6 divide by x squared minus 1, and then all of that divide by x squared minus 4 over x squared plus 2x plus 1. <coughs> okay, so how should we begin? Factor all the stuff. Okay. So notably, there's kind of like four things, right? One, two, three, four things. And they're all polynomials of degree 2. And we've gone over methods to factor po such polynomials of degree 2. Uh, three of the four of them factor quite readily. The top left one requires a, a little bit of work, but the other ones you should be able to factor immediately. So, how about the bottom left? Yes, x plus 1 multiplied by x minus 1. So you can see this in two ways. You can either see it as, well, I could write that as x squared minus 1 squared, because 1 is 1 squared. And then this is the difference of squares. And how does the difference of squares factor? <coughs> I'm fishing for a phrase that starts with P. The difference of squares factors as the starts with P, ends with product of conjugates. 
<laughs> oh, that. <laughs> so, would you please remind me, what is the conjugate of A plus B? A minus B. So here's two factors. What is the conjugate of X plus 1? X minus 1. And the conjugate of X minus 1? X plus 1. The difference of squares factors as the product of conjugates. Okay. So, <clears throat> pardon me, how about the top uh, right? How does it factor? Very good. For similar reasons, right? Because you could reckon x squared minus 4 as x squared minus 2 squared, so that it's the difference of squares and it will factor as the product of its own conjugates, x plus 2 and x minus 2. Alternatively, you could say, well, this is x squared plus 0x minus 4, and that means that you're looking for two numbers whose product is negative 4 and whose sum is 0. Well, 2 and negative 2 fit the bill. How about the bottom right? How does it factor? x plus 1 and x plus 1. Very good. x plus 1 and x plus 1. Because in this case, you're looking for two numbers whose product is 1 and whose sum is 2. Well, 1 times 1 is 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2. So 1 and 1 fit the bill. <coughs> Okay, now, the, in, in a sense, what made all of these three, one, two, three, easy to do is that they're all monic. What does monic mean? The leading coefficient is one. And that's also your signal that the polynomial in the top left is going to be slightly more complicated because it's not monic. Okay. So let's deal with the non-monic one. So... We're looking for two numbers whose product is what? Negative 12. Negative 12. And how did you arrive at that negative 12? Negative 6 times 2. Right, the product of the first and last coefficients. We're looking for two numbers whose product is 2 times negative 6, which is to say negative 12. And we want the sum to be what? 1. And how did you get 1? It's the, number. the middle number. Okay, so can you think of two numbers whose product is negative 12 and whose sum is positive 1? Very good. So negative 3, positive 4. <coughs> Does it? Okay, so now what that tells us is we're going to take that polynomial, 2x squared plus, now usually you don't write 1x, you just write x, but just to be as clear as possible, I'm going to write 1x minus 6. And what, what these numbers do is they tell us how we're going to split that 1. We're going to say that, okay, we're going to reckon that 1x as being negative 3x plus 4 more. So we're splitting it. Like 2x squared minus... 3x plus 4x minus 6. This 1x split like so. Now you might object and say, things are not looking good. <laughs> we had three terms and now we have four terms. This is even worse. Okay, well, okay, in that sense I suppose so. But but now that we have four terms, now that we have four terms, and we've split them in this clever way, we can make two groups of two. The first two and the last two. And what are we going to do with each group? Find the greatest common factor. So for that group, what's the greatest common factor? x. So we get x times 2x minus 3. And then plus, for that group, 4x minus 6, what's the greatest common factor? 2. And when you factor that out, what do you get? 2x minus 3. 
And that's a good thing. Why is that a good thing? These match. These match. If they didn't match, if you got to this position and these were not matching, that would mean that you had made a, an error somewhere in the previous steps. So notably, because 2x minus 3 occurs in both of these, that means that it can be factored out. And then the question remains, what goes in there? The greatest common factors. The greatest common factors. So that is to say that here's x plus 2 because x plus 2 and So any question about performing that factorization? So, so this is what I meant, if you weren't clear what I said some days ago when I said that having a monic polynomial is a cause for celebration. <laughs> celebration that we don't have to do this. Okay, so it factors like this. x plus 2 multiplied by 2x minus 3. Any question getting to this position? So now, have we satisfied the instructions of the exercise? No, right? The instructions were to simplify by cancellation. So, but now we have it all factored out. Now it's possible to proceed. So, what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say we're dividing by a fraction. So dividing by a fraction is the same as what? Multiplying by, their... Multiplying by its reciprocal. So I'm going to write x plus 2 times 2x minus 3 divide by x plus 1 times x minus 1 multiply by reciprocal. So would you please remind me what reciprocal means? Right. <laughs> Very good. X plus 1, X plus 1 over X plus 2, X minus 2. Okay. So now, now we can start canceling. Okay. So we'll start pairing things off. Here's an X plus 2. Is there anything that'll cancel it? Yeah, that one, right? I want to cancel it. And we're canceling with impunity. Why are we canceling with impunity? We're not worried about the domain. We're not worried about the domain. So the red things, the red things are paired up and leaving. Okay, how about the 2x minus 3? Will anything cancel with it? Nope. There's no other 2x minus 3 floating around. Okay, how about x plus 1? Will anything cancel with it? Okay, that, that one will cancel with it? No, on the bottom. Th these two? Oh, that one, right? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> then... So this one pairs up with this one. So the green ones are leaving. <clears throat> okay, how about this x plus 1? Will anything cancel with it? Well, why not that one? It's already been used. Yeah, we, we used it up. It's already been paired up. Won't we'll work. So this one, there's nothing to cancel this one. How about how about this x minus 1? Is there anything for it? No? How about this x minus 2? Is there anything for it? No. So there's no, nothing, else, nothing else can pair off. So the paired off red and green bits, they're going. And then everything else is remaining. So 2x minus 3 times x plus 1 over x minus 1 times x minus 2. But wait a minute, aren't x plus 1 and x minus 1 basically the same thing? No, <laughs> they're not. <laughs> not even close. In, in, in the same sense, 
that, you know, six and eight aren't basically the same thing. <laughs> They're not. <laughs> okay. <coughs> so any question about this exercise? Okay, it's a nice exercise because there's cancellation and and you got to do this intermediate factorization of a non-monic polynomial. Nice stuff going on in there. Lots of techniques on display. Any question about it? Okay. <clears throat> Another matter that we need to deal with is the following. So this is straight out of grade school. So A over B plus C over B. Notably, what I'd like for you to observe is that the denominators in both of these terms is the same. It's B in both cases. <coughs> so what's the answer then? Yeah, A plus C, all of this over B. So this is when the denominators are the same. D nom, D nom. Because, as a loose analogy, the denominator is like the type of the thing. So just like three apples plus five apples is eight apples, because you can do that because you've got this, the same kind of thing. Okay, the fact that the denominator is the same means that these terms are kind of the same kind of thing. Whereas, for, uh, by, con by contrast, you cannot say that three apples plus five oranges is eight oranges or whatever. You, it doesn't work that way. They have to be the same category. So A plus B, uh, sorry, A over B plus C over D. So now notably, notably the denominators are now different. They're different. So it, in that sense, these are like things of different categories. So in order to get this right, this is the formula that you learn from from grade school. It's AD plus BC divide BD. Does anyone know the name of this formula? You probably do. I'll give you a hint. So, so when you're doing this, A over B plus, I mean, the, among mathematicians, there's not a name, but among in grade school, there is a name. Cross multiply. That's it, right? So it's called cross multiply because notice that this is a group, the red group, <coughs> red group, and this is a group. And those groups are crossing each other. So this is frequently, at least in the state of Texas, referred to as the cross-multiplication formula. But if you came from a different place, then they might have also circled this group. And they might have still called it the cross-multiply formula, but they also might have called it the butterfly formula. Because I suppose now it looks like a butterfly. I don't know, I just work here. <laughs> Okay, so, so now you might wonder, okay, that's a formula Ms. Harris taught me, fine, uh, but why, why must it be this way? Okay, so <clears throat> the reason why it must be this way is that if you want to perform this addition, A over B plus C over D, then these denominators are different. This one has a B, but it is lacking a D. This one over here has a D, but and this one doesn't have it. Similarly, what is this one lacking? A B. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna make my attempt to fix it by saying the following. Well, what's this one missing? A D. So I'm gonna write D. I'm gonna put a D down here. Uh, I'll do it like this. Put the D right here. But you can't just arbitrarily put Ds in denominators in order to make sure that we haven't modified the the, the term, what else must we do? Put a D in the numerator. That's what makes it right. Similarly, 
C over D, what was this term missing? A B. So I'm going to put the B down there so that it has one. But you can't just put Bs in denominators. What else must you do? You must put it in the numerator. And notably, what I want you to observe is that because of the commutative property of multiplication, these are both BD, both denominators, which is to say that this is AD over BD plus BC over BD. And now the denominators are the same. And so that they work in, in this way now. And it's this formula. OK, that being said now, Let's do it in this way. Let's say, OK, <clears throat> how about 6 over x plus 3 plus uh, 2 over x plus 7. And what I'd like to point out to you is that this is really exactly the same as the thing above. It's exactly the same. Are these denominators the same? They're not the same. So the way that you get this to be a single fraction, because that would be the instruction on this exercise, express this as a single fraction, is you say, OK, I'll do the cross multiply thing. <coughs> OK. So then that would be 6 times x plus 7. That would be the first part. And then plus what? 2 times x plus 3. X plus three. And then what is the denominator? Very good. And then you simplify it a little bit. So 6x and 2x is 8x. Excuse me. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, 6 times 7 is 42, and 2 times 3 is 6, and the sum of those is 48. Okay, then we could factor out 8 and get what? 8 times x plus 6 over x plus 3 times x plus 7. And there's no cancellation. But on some, on some such exercises, they're, they're so arranged that you could make one last cancellation. <coughs> so now I have a different question for you that I want to raise from grade school. And that is, what if... What if I said, OK, I want you to add 1 half plus 3 eighths. What's the answer? Seven eighths. Seven eighths. So the audience, at least historically in my experience, is split. So some of you. Some of you did, would do the cross multiply thing and say that, OK, it's actually going to be 8 plus 6 over 16. 8 plus 6 is 14, divide by 16. Oh, there's a common 2. I can factor it out. 7 over 8. Ha about half of you did, did it that way. There's another cohort of you that said, well, that, I know that's halves. And these are eighths. But this is really 4 eighths. So that's 4 eighths and 3 eighths, so it's 7 eighths. So you're sort of subverting the, the cross multiply formula and, and then not having to do the subsequent cancellation at the end. The exact same things occur uh, algebraically, and so let's just view one because that's all the time that we have. So if I were to give you something like, uh, you know, 3 over x plus 2 times x plus 5 plus uh, 10 over x plus 2 times x uh, minus 4. Then notice what, notice in the first place that these denominators are different. But they have this in common. That part's in common. And if I wanted to make them, if I wanted to make the denominators the same, so th this is what's in common. 
what is to to make these denominators the same? What is this denominator missing? X minus four. This one's missing an x minus four. And what is that denominator missing? An x plus five. So the way you the way you add this together, the shortest way, is to say that well, this should be. It'll still have that x plus two. It'll still have its x plus five. And then what we said it was missing, we said it was missing an x minus 4. So I'm going to put an x minus 4 here because we said it was missing an x minus 4. But you can't just arbitrarily put an x minus 4 there. So to make it, to make it right and make sure that you didn't change anything, what else must you do? <coughs> put it in the numerator. And then we'll put a 10 here. This one will still have its x plus 2, and it will still have its x minus 4, but what was this one missing? It was missing an x plus 5, so I'll put an x plus 5. But you can't just arbitrarily put an x plus 5 in a denominator. What else must you do? In the numerator. In the numerator. And now notably, this denominator is the same as that one. Now they're the same, and now you just add them together. Okay, have a nice Wednesday.